everyone. My name is Katherine Larson, and I'm here today to tell you about why I think seaweed is the building material of the future. My inspiration as a designer comes from traditional architecture, and it has ever since I was 16 and living in Japan, where I learned that a thousand years ago, we figured out how to make pagodas, shrines, and temples earthquake resistant, and this same technology is applied today to modern buildings, like a Sakasa sky tree. I ended up using this principle to apply to architecture school, and I ended up finishing my degree in Denmark. And in Denmark, I began to get very interested in thatch. I was interested not only in the traditional Danish thatched farmhouses, but how modern contemporary Danish architects were taking this material in new and exciting directions. The best example I can think of is the Wadensee Visitor Center by Door to Mandrup Architects. In this building, thatch is applied on the facade and roof in a sculptural manner, rising dramatically out of the landscape. Now, thatch was actually the perfect building material for this location. You see, the Wadensee Visitor Center is located in the middle of a nature preserve, so there is a lot of protected flora and fauna. This began to make me think about the environmental advantages we could have if we returned to traditional building. But above all else, all different kinds of thatch, there was one type of thatch in Denmark in, in, Denmark in general that got me incredibly interested, and this was seaweed thatch. And I think what initially interested me was the fact that I could find almost no resources in detail in English. So I quickly realized that if I was going to study this further, I would need to learn Danish. So I did, and I ended up writing my thesis on this subject. You see, seaweed thatching began on the island of Lesu around the Middle Ages, after the island accidentally deforested themselves because it was a thriving saltwork industry. And in the process, they needed to come up with a new building material, and they needed to come up with one fast. So they turned to the eelgrass washing up on their shores to serve as their new roofing material. Now, what I found really interesting was that at first, this construction was actually quite simple. It was a half timber tamed construction with a pin in it to hold the seaweed in place on the roof. However, over time, the building method became women's work, and the women treated the seaweed as if they were spinning wool. So this process evolved, and this was what I wanted to focus my energy on. You see, in the autumn, the women would gather up the seaweed after autumnal storms. They would then spread it on a field to be rained on and dried for six to eight months. This process would remove all the microalgae from the seaweed and make it rot resistant. Now, in the spring, construction could begin on a new roof. The women gathered the seaweed up once more and began twisting it into large ropes in Danish called vask. These vasks served as the foundation of the seaweed roofs, and they were extremely important. After this point, more seaweed, seaweed was piled on top of the roof, and a woman would begin to dance on top of the roof to help uh, compress the roof together and release the natural binders. We often think of construction as this conservative, very male-dominated profession, yet on this island, it was the women's role of construction. I knew I wanted to honor this with my own work. Now, unfortunately for eelgrass globally, there was a wasting disease in the 1930s, and this meant that the eelgrass baths around Denmark went from this to this. And this had several consequences, the first being that eelgrass stopped washing up on Lesu almost altogether. The other being that because there was no more eelgrass, they began replacing these roofs with traditional thatch instead of seaweed thatch. And in the process, they almost forgot entirely how to seaweed thatch were it not for the preservation efforts of about 10 years ago. The other being that around this time in Denmark, there was actually a thriving seaweed uh, export industry that died out as well because seaweed was used to stuff mattresses, but it was also used as an insulation product. And you can think of insulation as if it's giving your building a nice, big, warm hug. It keeps us uh, warm in the winters and cool in the summers. So this is an incredibly important material for us. And seaweed is actually, eelgrass in particular, is as um, thermally as insulative as modern mineral wool. So this was actually an incredible resource that we lost and we forgot about over time. And globally, eelgrass is now seen as waste. In fact, the communes of Solowal, Gael, and Ku throw out about 22,000 tons of eelgrass annually. If we just changed how we were treating this material, we could then harvest again and use it to keep our buildings warm.
Now with all this information and background knowledge in mind, I came up with my concept, a concept to bring seaweed thatch to the modern building industry by creating prefabricated thatched panels. I envisioned that these panels could be used on facade and roof and act as supplementary insulation and at the same time act as a kind of green roof. Because you see, on the islands of Lesu in the summer, up to 30 different plant species grow in these roofs. But where do you find eelgrass? Now, this was uh, very lucky for me because my school's material design lab actually had many kilos of eelgrass and nobody was using it at all. So I got the opportunity to come and play with it. I started off very small scale, 10 by 10 square centimeter thatched models. And with these models, I was experimenting with different gridding patterns and thatching techniques, but also with different natural binders. This is my husband, Lucas Larsen. Yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he was my assistant and communications guru for the project. He's also Danish. Um, and together we thatched about 48 different thet uh, sketch models. Yeah, he really loves me. Um, <laughs> and in the process, we actually realized together that using the eelgrass by itself with no additives whatsoever was the best process. And this is how we scaled up to our large scale models. So now I had one-to-one -one scale prototypes, and I really wanted to test them. Luckily, this is where my school's material design lab again came to the rescue by helping me build a weathering installation on the roof of the school where it would be exposed to large winds and high temperatures and cold temperatures and sleet and hail and snow and all different conditions. And I was able to study this over a year period to see how it would affect the panels. And because of this, I was able to come up with what I believe is my next and most successful prototype of all, with the help of funding from Boli von Spierkäse and a student assistant named Gabriel Pantoja. So now I have a new second generation of panels that I'm excited to test and try out with what I call the CB Pavilion. The CB Pavilion is using my panels in an architectural context, which will allow me to study and see how people interact with this material. I'm going to be building it in the next three weeks with a build team of Monica Yakatide, James Birkinshaw, and Andres Mokolovs. So very exciting. I want to see how people interact and experience these panels in real life. And I also want to show the global building industry that you can, in fact, build with seaweed, and you can use panels like mine to create an easy solution for all. Because at the end of the day, I firmly believe that from learning from our past, we can build for a better and greener future. Thank you.